What is up everybody? Welcome back to the Maths Guy. Today we're looking at how to recognize the place value of three digits numbers. Let's go. Okay, and what we're going to try and remember today is to use a place value grid to help us. But first of all, what do I mean by a three digit number? Well, if we look at this number here, 725, we can see that it's made up of three digits. We have the five, the two, and the seven. And each of these digits has a value. And we use the place value grid to help us understand what value. So let's put our 725 inside our place value grid to see what value each of these digits holds. So our five would go inside our ones column, our two would go inside our tens column, and our seven will go inside our hundreds column. Therefore, what we're saying is that we have five ones, two tens, and seven hundreds. So therefore, another way that we could look at this number is to partition it, which means to break it into its place value parts. So we could say I have five ones, two tens, which would be 20, and seven one hundreds, which would be 700. So 725 has the same value as saying 700, add 20, add five. So what we can do is just look at our 725 and create our own place value chart above it. We can say I have five ones, two tens, and seven hundreds. And organizing your work and your numbers like this with the place value signs over the top is a really good habit to get into the habit of now because when we start to look at addition and subtraction, we're going to put those place value titles on top so that we make sure we put numbers in the right columns. But for now, it's really important to understand that this 2, for example, is not a 2 because it's in the tens column. It actually represents two tens, which equals 20. And the 7 is not just a 7. It's actually seven hundreds which equals 700. But our 5, because it's in the 1's column, actually only represents 5 1's, which equals 5. And what we should always find is that when we've broken our number down like this, when we add it back together, we should end up with the same number. And 700 plus 20 plus 5 equals 725. Let's have a look at another number. Let's have a look at 356, and let's do exactly the same thing. But let's start by putting our titles on top ourselves. So my 356 is made up of six ones, five tens, and three hundreds. So now if I put this number into our place value chart, I can see I have six ones, five tens, and three hundreds. And again, just like before, I can break this number down by partitioning it, which means breaking it into its place value sections. I have six ones, five tens, which is 50, and three one hundreds, which is 300. And again, I should find that if I add these together, I should equal the original number, and 300 plus 50 plus 6 equals 356. So in other words, I have three hundreds, which equals three hundred. I have five tens, which equals fifty. And I have six ones, which just equals six. And again, adding these together will always equal my original number, 356. So the really important thing to learn today is that even though this looks like a five, it's not just a 5 because it's in the tens column. It actually has the value of a 50. And that this 3 in the hundreds column isn't just a 3 because it's in the hundreds column. It actually has a value of 300. And because our 6 is in the ones column, it has a value of only ones. So 6 ones 
is just six. Understanding how to use a place value chart is super important because when we start to look at addition and subtraction, we're going to make sure that we put our numbers in the correct column by putting them in our place value parts. Now, I just want to show you something. Let's imagine we're not looking at this number for a moment, and let's say I put a 1 into our 1's column. Well, the value of our number at the moment equals 1. But if I move my 1 into the 10's column, then I end up with this gap in the 1's column. And I can't just have a gap in the 1's column, so I put what's called a placeholder in there. Because now my 1 is in the 10's column, I have nothing in the 1's, so I'm filling it with this placeholder. And therefore, my new value equals 10. And if I do the same thing again, I move my 1 into the 100's column. Again, now I'm left with this gap in the 10's column, which now needs to be filled with another placeholder. I end up with 100. So just moving my 1 from the 1's into the 10's into the 100's makes the value of my number go from a 1 to a 10 to a 100. And what we might notice is that getting from 1 to 10 means that I'm timesing by 10. And then to get from 10 to 100, I also times by 10. And that's because every column on my place value chart is 10 times bigger than the last column. So anything in my 1's column, for example, if I put a 5, if I then move it into my 10's column, it has 10 times that value. Originally it was just a 5, and then I've moved it into the 10's column, and it now equals 50, which is 10 times larger. And the same thing from going from my 10's to my 100's column. It's 10 times larger. So if I move this 5 again into the 100's column, it becomes a 500. 500 is 10 times larger than 50. Wow, that's an interesting little fact, isn't it? Okay, let's look at what to remember. First, we can, use, first we can see the value of each digit by putting it in the place value chart. Place value charts are super important and are going to become your best friends. And each column is 10 times bigger than the previous column in our place value chart. And that's about it. That is all you need to know about recognizing the value of each. And that is all you need to know about. And that's about it. That is all you need to know about recognizing the place value of each number in a three-digit number. Hopefully this video has been helpful for you. If it has, think about sharing it with a friend or subscribing to the channel. But for now, I'm going to see you in another video, guys. Peace out.